Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this lecture, we are going to discuss Ampere's circuital law, and this is also called simply as Ampere's law. And Ampere's law is similar to Gauss's law in electrostatics. So, the Ampere's law states that the line integral of magnetic field intensity around a closed path is equal to the current enclosed. And the mathematical form of Ampere's law is H dot dl closed integral is equal to I. So this is a closed integral of magnetic field intensity uh, and that is equal to the current enclosed. Or we can also describe the Ampere's law as the sum of the length elements times the magnetic field in the direction of length segments is equal to the current enclosed by the closed loop. So you can see here this is a current flowing through the conductor and that current is equal to I. So whatever closed path we make around this current carrying conductor, if we evaluate this line integral of H dot DL around any closed path, this is also a circular closed path, this is a rectangular closed path or any other arbitrary closed path. If we evaluate this as a closed integral, uh, that will be equal to the current enclosed. So if we assume a circular closed path around the current carrying conductor, then the differential length dl will be equal to rho d phi a phi. And let's evaluate this integral for such a closed path. So h dot dl will be equal to h dot rho d phi a phi. So h dot a phi will be equal to h phi, which is component of h along phi axis. And that is equal to i. And uh, this integral uh, is actually taken from 0 to 2 pi. So uh, the integral of d phi is equal to phi. So after putting this limit, we will have h phi into 2 pi rho is equal to i. And h will be equal to i over 2 pi rho a phi. And that is the same expression that we obtained using white Savaret's law for an infinite uh, current uh, filament. Right, so that same expression is evaluated again by using Ampere's law, but the application of Ampere's law is much simpler as compared to the byte severance law because in byte severance law there was an infinite integral involved. So, after evaluating this infinite integral, we were able to evaluate the magnetic field intensity, but by using Gauss's law, oh, sorry, but by using Ampere's law, uh, that uh, uh, calculation was done in just three or four steps, right? So, Ampere's law is uh, very simple uh, because it is easy to apply it to any infinitely long current carrying conductor. So now, uh, now we can use Ampere's law to evaluate magnetic field intensity across different regions of a coaxial cable. So this is uh, the 3D view of a coaxial cable and in coaxial cable we have a center conductor. So this is the inner conductor and this inner conductor is surrounded by uh, the outer conductor, right? This is the outer conductor and the current is actually entering this inner conductor and it is coming out from the outer conductor. So the direction of current is opposite but the magnitude of current is same in both the conductors. And we can apply Gauss's, uh, sorry, we can apply Ampere's law uh, to evaluate magnetic field intensity at different uh, positions uh, within this uh, coaxial cable. So first we will consider the surface whose radius is smaller than this radius of the inner surface, right? So the radius of this inner surface is A, or inner conductor is A, rho is equal to A. And uh, the radius of uh, the inner surface of the outer conductor is equal to B and the radius of the outer surface of the outer conductor is equal to C. So the same thing can be observed in this figure. This is the cross-sectional view. This is the inner conductor and this is the outer conductor. So our first region is uh, the surface which is having the radius smaller than the radius of the inner conductor. So rho is less than A. So rho less than A is actually the surface uh, whose radius is smaller than the radius of this inner conductor A. So that surface uh, will be lying somewhere over here. And we have the uniform distribution of the current across uh, all the conductors. So it means the current density 
विल बी सेम थ्रू आउट दी कंडक्टर सो करंट डेंसिटी फॉर दिस सर्फिस इज इक्वल टू द करंट डेंसिटी फॉर दिस आउटर सर्फिस सो करंट डेंसिटी फॉर द इनर सर्फिस इज इक्वल टू करंट पर यूनिट एरिया सो करंट एन क्लोज इन दिस सर्फिस रो इज इक्वल टू आई एन क्लोज सो द एरिया ऑफ दिस इनर सर्फिस इज इक्वल टू पाई आर स्केयर और पाई रो स्केयर सो द करंट डेंसिटी विल बी इक्वल टू आई एन क्लोज डिवाइडेड बाई पाई रो स्केयर एंड दैट करंट डेंसिटी इज इक्वल टू द करंट डेंसिटी फॉर दिस आउटर कंडक्टर and the current flowing through this whole outer conductor is equal to i and the cross sectional area of this inner conductor is equal to pi a square so i n closed over pi rho square is equal to i over pi a square by mistake i have written l over here so kindly ignore this l because pi r square l or pi a square l is actually the volume but we are using area in this expression so let's ignore this l so i n closed can be evaluated using this uh, equation so i n closed is equal to pi rho square over a square and after applying the ampere's law h is equal to i n closed over 2 pi rho a phi we can calculate h so h is equal to i n closed over 2 pi rho a phi i n closed is equal to this expression so h will be equal to i rho over 2 pi a square a phi for this region for this region and uh, our second region is uh, the region uh, when uh, rho is greater than a but smaller than b so this is our second region and in this region uh, that will be the surface rho which is lying between a and b and uh, that surface is actually enclosing the current i total current i which is flowing in the inner direction so ampere's law can be applied over that uh, surface and h is equal to i over 2 pi rho a phi for this surface which is lying between a and b now let's move to the third region when our uh, surface rho is actually lying between b and c so for this region b less than rho less than c uh, our surface rho will be lying over here between b and c so this is our row this is our row equal to b and this is our c surface again in this case we will apply this condition that the current density is uniform throughout the outer conductor so i over pi into c square minus b square the current total current enclosed in this outer surface is equal to i and uh, the surface area or cross sectional area of this outer surface is equal to pi c square minus b square right this is pi c square this is pi b square so if i subtract pi b square minus pi c square i will get the cross sectional area of this annular surface right so i over pi into c square minus b square and uh, now i will consider the current density for only this region from b to rho so that will be equal to i n closed divided by pi rho square minus b square so these densities will be equal so i n closed can be evaluated and that will be equal to i into rho square minus b square divided by c square minus b square so this is actually the current uh, which is uh, flowing in this opposite direction right this current is flowing in this direction and the total current enclosed by this surface Uh, which is represented by rho will be equal to this current i minus this enclosed current minus the current enclosed in this uh, partial surface right so that will be equal to i net so i net is equal to i minus i enclosed and uh, i minus i enclosed can be written as this expression and after taking the lcm and doing the simplification we will get i net equal to c square minus rho square divided by c square minus b square into i so considering this i net we can again apply ampere's law and ampere's law is equal to i net over 2 by rho a phi and i net is equal to i into c square minus rho square over c square minus b square so that is our expression for the magnetic field intensity for this region rho between b and c and for the region rho greater than c that is if we want to measure magnetic field intensity outside the coaxial cable 
that will be equal to zero because the net current enclosed in that outer surface will be equal to zero so i current is flowing in this direction i current is flowing in the opposite direction so the net current is equal to zero so net magnetic field intensity is also equal to zero for rho greater than c right so this thing also this thing is also described over here and if we want to plot these magnetic field intensities with respect to rho uh, we will get such a curve okay so this is our rho axis this is our h axis and in this region when the rho varies from 0 to a or rho less than a h is equal to i rho over 2 by a square so h is directly proportional to rho so that's why we will get a straight line over here but at this point when rho is equal to a the magnetic field intensity is equal to i a over 2 by a square so it will become i over 2 by a right so this is i over 2 by a now let's move towards the second section uh, and for this region h is equal to i over 2 by rho a phi and in this region uh, we can substitute rho equal to a so if i substitute rho equal to a i will get i over 2 by a so from the same point this curve will start for this region a to b it will start from exactly the same point where it is finished for the previous reason right so this is i over 2 by a and when we put this upper limit of rho it will become i over 2 by b okay so this point is actually i over 2 by b so now let's move towards the third section and for the third section uh, we have this expression for h now let's put uh, rho equal to b over here so it will become i over 2 pi b c square minus b square divided by c square minus b square so they will be cancelled out and h will be equal to i over 2 pi b so again h will start from the same point over here i over 2 pi b so it will start from the same point and let's see where it finishes so it will finish when rho equal to c so let's put rho equal to c in this expression it will become i over 2 pi c c square minus c square over c square minus b square so it will be equal to 0 when rho is equal to c so at point rho equal to c the magnetic field intensity is equal to 0 and from beyond this point rho greater than c the magnetic field intensity will remain equal to 0 so i hope that lecture was quite understandable for you and uh, you can apply ampere's law uh, over a coaxial cable to mag evaluate magnetic field intensity for watching more lectures please subscribe this channel until the next lecture it's goodbye